I had a color analysis done. Why did I do this? What did I learn? How did it affect me? And what was the process like? Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Melissa and I usually make content on my low buy year or luxury content. But today's video is a little bit different because I'm gonna go over my color analysis that I had done. So first I wanna to touch on why. Why did I have my color analysis done? As I mentioned, I'm going through a low buy year. And with that low buy year, I have noticed that I have too much stuff. Not only do I have too much stuff, I wanna curate my closet. Now for me, curating my closet looks very different than most of the closet curations that you see here on YouTube because I don't want to have a neutral color palette. I want to have a color palette that works with me and my skin tone. I want to work or I want to have a curated closet that is something that is going to inspire me, that's going to make me feel good, that's going to make me excited. And a neutral color palette, blacks and whites and creams and beiges and browns, although I love that for a lot of people and sometimes I secretly wish I could pull it off, it's simply not me. So by doing a color analysis, I'm able to figure out five or six different colors that really work with my skin tone and pair them together, colors that work together. That way, if I have a top, it can match with any of my bottoms or vice versa. My dresses are gonna match with any of my jackets because I'm sticking to a specific color palette that not only works with my skin tone, it not only works with my hair, my eyes, my makeup, but it also works with other pieces in my closet. Now this was really important for me because I don't wanna shop as much as I have shopped in previous years. And part of the reason why I have had to shop so much and pre had to, oh my gosh, you guys, just, just roll with me here. The reason why I had to shop so much in my previous years is because I was buying every color of the rainbow. I was buying orange and orange doesn't work for me. I was buying yellow and yellow doesn't work for me. So I was sticking to a broad range of colors and I couldn't pair my orange top with my baby blue skirt. So by for, for that reason, because I was having to buy things that go with orange, things that go with yellow, things that go with blue, things that go with pink, et cetera, et cetera. My closet was too full. It was full of items that I hardly ever wore because I knew the orange top didn't go with my skin tone even though I loved the orange top. And because I loved the orange top, I had to buy other things to go with that orange top. So that whole section of orange and yellows and browns and browns wasn't being used very often. But in order for me to incorporate that one orange top that I really, really loved, Loved, I had to have those other pieces to wear with that piece. So my point is by curating a collection of clothes that stick into a specific color palette that work well with my skin tone, I don't have to buy as much because all of the pieces are gonna be cohesive and all of the pieces are gonna be interchangeable. I don't have to buy something specific to go with something specific. Now that we've gotten my why out of the way, let's go with how. How did I do it? Where did I look? I actually just so happened to stumble across somebody who was doing a color analysis and she was posting them online. So I decided to follow her. Now I already knew I was a cool undertone. That's something very clear with me. If I do wear warm tones, I almost look washed out and sickly. The bags under my eyes get very dark when I wear warm tones. My eyes look yellow, the whites around my eyes, and also my teeth look yellow if I wear warm tones. So it was very clear to me that I was a cool tone color palette, but I wasn't sure what type of cool tone. And that's important because if you are the type of person where you have no clue what you are, I was there once, I had to do lots of research to figure out what I was, then you might want to do a in-person analysis. I did a virtual analysis. Again, I already knew I was cool tone. I just didn't know what part of the spectrum of cool tone I was in. So I will have her link down below. Her, um, her Instagram handle is Utah Style something. I will have her link down below for you guys. And so I was able to do a virtual color analysis. What I needed to do for this is I reached out to her 
And she said, take a photo in front of the window with natural daylight, no makeup. You need to be able to see your full face. So I did this with, without my glasses on and I decided to have my hair down. She didn't tell me to have my hair down, but I did put my hair down because this is my natural hair color now. I wanted to make sure that she got the full effect. So your hair tone does go with your color analysis as well. So I had dry hair that was down no makeup on, no glasses on, straight in front of a mirror. And I wore a low cut top. That way there was no colors up by my face altering what the color of my actual face was. I went ahead and I sent her in this photo. I actually sent her in several so that she could pick the one that worked the best. So I did one straight forward from the side, from the side and a couple different angles. Again, I wanted this color analysis to really, really be a true color analysis. And when you're doing it virtually, it can be really, really tricky. She said these photos are great. She picked the one that worked out best for her and then she went and did her work. I didn't have to do anything else from there other than pay her. I only paid a grand total of $45. I thought this was a very, very fair price. And if you were to go in store or in person to do it, it is a much greater price. Now, every analysis is going to have different prices. I did it virtually because she is in Utah. She's not here in Arizona. So I couldn't go in person and do it. Now I am interested in going in person and doing one one day, but it's not something that I'm going to do right now. So I believe it's about two or three days that pass and she sends me in 18 different slides. On each slide is the picture that I sent her of my face. One side is a cool tone, one side is a warm tone. And you can see the difference between the cool tone and the warm tone. And what she did is she checked off the color that worked best for me. We diagnosed that I am definitely cool tone. I can pull neutral, so I can wear neutral tones sometimes, but for the most part, I pull cool tones. And she even did a comparison between this type of cool tone versus this type of cool tone. So I let her know that my favorite color was green and she did two different greens. I'll pop it up on the photo for you guys. And she shared which one would be best for me. So she really broke it down into what colors would be best for me. Afterwards, she sent me an email. This was all through email after I initially told her that I wanted to do a color analysis through Instagram because that's where I found her. Then she sent me her email and we did everything through email at that point. She asked me or she sent me the slides. She asked me if I had any questions. She let me know what colors she felt were really beautiful on my skin tone. I talked to her about what colors I was loving and I really stuck to cooler tones but I did learn something and that is that I am not as cool ashy cool tones as I thought some of those brighter cool tones tones like where's it at this cool tone right here works better with my skin tone let's see if you guys can see a difference here so I'm going to stop talking Okay, now I'm gonna show with you one of the cool tones I thought worked best for me, and that's this color. So I was going towards the more like really cool gray ashy tones, and actually the brighter cool tones work better for me. So let me put it up against my face. Again, I have makeup on right now and I've got the flashing lights, so I don't know if it'll make a difference, but it'll be fun for me to see in my editing if it made a difference at all. So let's stop talking, Melissa. Okay, now let's do a warm tone. Are you guys ready for this? I notice a big difference anytime I put this bag in screen that my skin tone gets completely washed out. So I'm gonna put this next to my face. Let's do it on the same side. I'm smiling because your teeth can look more yellow next to certain colors. Okay, let's put this right under my face. So basically, I have been wearing cool tones. I've been gravitating to cool tones because those are the tones that I knew that worked well for me. But I was gravitating to the wrong season and I don't remember the season of the more gray cool tones. I will pop it up on the screen because I'm pretty sure I'll be able to find that for you. If not, I will email her and ask her. 
But what I realized is that I am more of a pop of color. I'm a little bit more of a vibrant cool tone. And that was really exciting to learn. So what has changed since learning what my color palette is? I haven't mentioned yet, and I'm gonna pop it up on the screen for you guys. I am a true summer color palette. What I have learned is one, that the pop of colors, the brighter, more saturated colors actually work better for me. So this lighter blue, although it works well with my skin tone, doesn't work quite as well as those little bit more saturated colors of the cool tone spectrum. So with that being said, I think that my shopping habits for my clothes are definitely going to change. After I did my color analysis, I did a little test on myself. I went on Nordstrom and I picked out pieces that I thought were my color, my colors, my color palette, and I added them to my cart. Then I went back to my photo of my colors and I realized that even after knowing what my color palette was, I still picked colors that were more like this muted color, which is totally okay because it is a cool tone and it does work with my skin tone. But I need to retrain my brain to work with those more saturated colors. And I thought that was really interesting. So I do plan on in the future. I don't know how soon because I am eager and very, very excited to add some more color, some more saturated color. But I am on my low buy, so I want to stick true to my low buy. But I also want to have fun with this. I want to play with this. So I'm torn on what I'm going to do. I haven't fully decided yet. I'm going to take some time to think about it. But I am really excited to add things in my wardrobe that are a little bit more saturated and see how it goes. I think that I will do just a few pieces at first and see how well I like them. Because even though those are my perfect colors, I don't have to wear those colors. I can stick to these colors if that's what I feel most comfortable in. It's just that my skin tone looks a little bit better in those more saturated colors. Another change, which I didn't expect, is that my handbag collection, I really want to get rid of all the things that don't work for my color palette. If they're not gonna work in my wardrobe, there's no reason to keep them. One of the things that I have learned with this 2024 low buy, now that I've been on it for over four months, I started in December, the first week of December, I don't need as much stuff and I really don't need things that I'm going to have to work really, really hard to make it work in my wardrobe. So I'm even considering letting go of warmer tones, which are my favorite of green, you guys. This is a warm tone green. It doesn't go with my skin tone. Now I'm not certain on it. I, I, I'm not there yet. I don't plan on selling this bag, but the bags that are truly a warm tone, I really don't want them in my collection. And so therefore I'm probably going to sell or move on from all of my warm tone handbags. And lastly, what is going to change from here on out after I knew my color analysis and I know what colors work for me, what changes are I'm going, am I going to make? There are quite a few. One, I'm letting go of my colorful, bright handbags that don't work for me or my creamy whites. Those don't really work for me either. They're not a cool tone. They are a warm tone white. Two, I want to go through my makeup. Now, I used to be a huge fan of makeup. I used to buy like I do with luxury now, I used to do that with makeup. I had a lot of fun with makeup, but I used to follow Jaclyn Hill and she wears a lot of warm tones. So I have a lot of warm tone color palettes that I haven't used. I've actually had them for years and years. I think it's probably been, honestly, you guys, five years since I bought a new eyeshadow palette. So what I think I'm going to do, and this goes 100% against my low buy, so that's why it's just a thought. I think I'm going to give all of my makeup to my girls because they just play with it and wash it off. Otherwise, I would just throw it away because it is expired. I mean, it's makeup that I've had for years and years, but for the sake of them playing with it and just washing it off, I think that would be perfectly fine. So I may give my entire makeup collection, other than my handful of new things, which is mostly merit, to my girls, and then buy one or two eyeshadow palettes one or two blushes, a baby pink really, I think looks well on my skin tone. And 
that's it. I think I'm just going, and then I have cool tone lipsticks already, so those I will keep, but my eyeshadow palettes are the main thing. I think I'm going to get rid of all my warm tone eyeshadow palettes and all of my blush palettes that have a lot of warm tones in them because they simply don't work with my skin tone, but I do need to have makeup for my day-to-day -day life. So I think one or two cool tone color palettes that have multiple colors would be perfect. I don't need anything more than that, and I probably would buy one, now maybe and then buy one later down the road once I get bored of the one I have and then like I said one or two blushes would be perfectly fine I don't need more than that I kind of have a routine I don't play with my makeup anymore and although that would be breaking my low buy rules I'm not supposed to buy any makeup all of my makeup is expired and I probably should buy it anyway so I'm not going to beat myself up about it if that's the decision I tr truly decide to go with but it's one of those things that I will think about it and digest it before I make that decision because I am trying to be intentional with my shopping. Obviously I will not be adding any warm tone colors to my wardrobe and probably not any neutrals either and even these beautiful light muted colors I don't think I'll be adding either. I think in the future, I will go for my color palette and really see how it works for me. There is one color that I've never ever experienced or worked with or used, and that's a berry, and berry goes really well with my skin tone. So I'm excited to see how that goes as well. And then moving forward with my luxury handbag collection, I'm just gonna make sure that they work with my color palette and work with my wardrobe as well. So this will be a long process. It will be a slow process. My eager self wants to run out and purchase everything new right away. And my new self, the, the more intentional self says, it's okay to slowly put these things into place and slowly curate a collection. Like I explained earlier, a curated collection that's all cohesive and all works together.